Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating an infinite series. A series is a sum and some series are infinite and some are more infinite than others. Anyways, this is what we have. 1 plus 3 fourths plus 5 over 16 plus 7 over 64. If you want to know the pattern, it's basically the odd numbers in the numerator and powers of 4 in the denominator, starting with 4 to the power 0. So you kind of use an odd number like let's say 2 and minus 1 for n equals 1 that would give us 1 and then at the bottom you would use 4 to the power n minus 1 because for n equals 1 we're supposed to get a 4 to the power 0 which is 1. Makes sense? So we're talking about this sum where n ranges from 1 to infinity. We're also going to be checking our results with Wolfram Alpha because you probably know sometimes Wolfram Alpha doesn't understand your query. It doesn't understand my query either, but just says Wolfram Alpha doesn't understand your query. Anyways, we'll check that too, see if Wolfram Alpha can handle the problem in its current form. Of course, if you prompt it with the sigma and the infinity and all that stuff, it can most of the time do it. it it'll even tell you if the sum converges or not, which means, are we gonna get a finite answer and is it always gonna be the same regardless of how we rearrange the series? Okay, anyways, I'm not going to go into the details of the convergence and divergence stuff, but I want to use a formula which should be well known if you're dealing with these kinds of things. So, first of all, I want you to notice that this can be written as 1 plus 3 times 1 over 4 plus 5 times 1 over 16 plus 7 times 1 over 64. And the next step, I can basically write this as 1 plus 3 times 1 over 4 to the first power, and then 5 times 1 over 4 to the second power, and then 7 times 1 over 4 to the third power. You probably notice that this is a pattern, and we can kind of generalize it. So to be able to find these sums, you can definitely go the whole numerical method or numerical way, but i rather use a formula because I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff, and I do need variables. In other words, I do need a polynomial, but in this case, it is going to be an infinite polynomial. What is that supposed to mean? I do need a series. Maybe you can call that a power series, right? So here's what we're going to use. Instead of this expression, by the way, I just added the first four numbers and I get the following number. Does this mean anything? Yeah, because all these terms are positive, you're expect to get something larger than this. But how much larger? That's a good question. Because notice that the denominator is going to grow up like crazy. So you're going to get very, very small numbers uh, towards the end, maybe in the middle. Who knows? Pretty soon <laughs> because 4 to the power 10. Think about it. It's 2 to the power 20, right? It's a very large number bigger than a million. So we're going to be adding small bits, small pieces, but that doesn't necessarily mean this is always going to converge. But I'll show you some results, like I said earlier, from Wolfram Alpha. But I want you to think about it first. Do you think Wolfram Alpha can handle this problem? Okay, so here's what we're going to consider. Notice that we have a number that is fixed and then we're raising it to different powers and we're always multiplying it by an odd number. So the coefficients are odd numbers, including the first one. And of course, you don't see the one fourth because it's one fourth to the power zero. So what I can do is kind of turn it into a variable expression, very variableize it. <laughs> I don't know, functionize it maybe. Let's call this x. So now this will be x squared, this thing, this will be x cubed, so on and so forth. So now we can write our sum as follows. 1 plus 3x plus 5x squared plus 7x cubed plus dot dot dot. You get the idea? So we kind of use the variable to represent it in the general form. This is actually an improvement over the problem because we're not looking at the specific case, we're looking for a general solution. So you replace x with something else, you should always get an answer. But x needs to be between negative 1 and 1, okay? Because if it's outside that interval, including negative 1 and 1, then it's not going to converge. But is this going to converge? Let's go ahead and take a look. To find this sum, I'll be presenting two methods. And you know what? I haven't started with the second method for a while, so I thought... And because of the way the second method was designed, because after I came up with the first method, I realized, uh oh, there's a second method. So hopefully when you see the second method, you're going to realize that. But I didn't want to give it away because first method gives it away. OK, so there's a good reason I start with the 
second method. Now, some people question, when you start with the second method, does it that become the first method? No. The second method is always the second method. Make sense? Okay, that's how I wrote it in my notes. That's why. So let's go ahead and start with the second method first. Okay, so I'm going to start with the well-known series, power series. What is that? It's the infinite geometric series. What is so significant about it? It's well-known and it's used in many different scenarios. Okay. First of all, this can be written as 1 over 1 minus x, but the convergence criteria, like I said earlier, absolute value of x needs to be less than 1. If x is 0, we're good because it's 1. If x is negative 1 or 1, it does not converge. And obviously, you can tell x equals 1 is going to cause an issue, right? Great. So, and that's, that's also another good thing because if you replace x with negative 1, you're going to get 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus dot dot dot. Some people say... This can be evaluated, look at this, we're adding the zeros. At zero, no. If you group them differently, you're gonna get a different answer. And obviously, you can get whatever you want, pretty much, and they use this also to kind of prove, quotation mark, uh, prove in quotes, uh, the Ramanujan's false identity, which is the sum of uh, reciprocals of integers. Or was it, oh, never mind. It's the sum of positive integers, which is negative 112, that is completely incorrect, and I made a video about it. You can go ahead and check it out. Sorry, Ramanujan, you got it wrong this time. So now, let's go ahead and see where we can go from here. This is well known, right? Hopefully. And then, we're going to go ahead and do something to this. What should we do? Differentiate. Why? Because we do need it. You'll see in a little bit. If you differentiate this, uh, the derivative of 1 is 0, so the derivative of x is going to be 1. The derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. Can we do this to an infinite series? Yeah, if it converges, sure, why not? And if you differentiate uh, 1 over 1 minus x, you're going to get 1 over 1 minus x squared. From chain rule, the derivative of negative x becomes negative 1. So that kind of undoes or cancels out the negative 1 that comes from the power, so on and so forth. Anyways, use the properties. You'll get there. Make sense? Or just memorize it. It's a lot easier. So if I square this, which is also another interesting identity, if I square this whole thing, it would equal the bottom. And you can see that by distributing, right? Easy. The multinomial or infinitinomial theorem. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do next. This is not good enough. We do need a little bit more of something. And we're going to go ahead and multiply the second one, this one, by x. What do you get if you multiply that by x? You get... 1 times x, which is x. I'm going to put that here so I can add like terms. If you multiply 2x by x, you're going to get 2x squared and then 3x cubed, so on and so forth. But this is just this expression right here, multiply by x, so it's just going to be x over 1 minus x squared. Make sense? Now, here's the magic. The mathematical touch. Add these two expressions and ta-da, you get 1 plus 3x, plus 5x squared, plus 7x cubed. Ta -da -da -da. We got the answer. And of course, these two have the same denominator, so I can add the numerators and get the answer. 1 plus x divided by 1 minus x quantity squared. Okay? This brings us almost to the end of the second method, but we still have the first method, so stick around because the first method will also be interesting. And also... The first method actually kind of gave me the idea for the second method. And you're going to understand what I'm talking about when we hopefully hit the end of the first method. Okay? Ready for the first method? Now, obviously, we're going to replace this with something, but let's do it at the end of the first method. So here's the first method, which is being done in the second order, but it's still the first. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the same idea. I start with this or maybe start with the end goal, right? This is what I'm trying to get. To get there, here's what we're going to do. Take this, okay? There's a different way to get there, which is really cool. This is 1 over 1 minus x again. I start with the same thing, but I do it a little differently. Uh, just one more step. Differentiate this, you're going to get 1 minus 2x. Oops, I should probably align the terms more appropriately. It doesn't matter because I'm not going to add them. 1 plus 2x, 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared plus 4x cubed, that, 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 the derivative is equal to 1 over 1 minus x squared. Again, one more time, remember we've talked about this, 
And now, here's a more mathematical touch. Multiply by two, okay? If you double everything, you see, this is a different approach because we're doing things very differently, okay? Notability sometimes likes to add, uh, just likes to act crazy, okay? So stop. Or the pen, I don't know what it is. But I just doubled everything, so it should double the expression on the right-hand side. Here we go. And the next thing we're going to do is just amazing. Write the first one one more time. 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed. What was that? 1 over 1 minus x. And now you're going to go ahead and subtract these two things. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So we're going to go ahead and negate the second expression and add them. So now we're going to subtract 2 minus 1, 1. 4x minus x, 3x. 5x squared, 7x cubed. Ta -da, da da we get the same sum. But in a different form, sort of, right? Because, look, does this look like that? No, not really at this point. But let's go ahead and simplify it. We can make a common denominator by multiplying by 1 minus x. And then add the numerators or subtract, whatever is appropriate and tada you're gonna get the answer in the exact same form again this is how the method was the other method was inspired the second method was inspired by the first that's why i wanted to show it to you first okay and this brings us <laughs> almost to the end because i still need to show you what wolfram alpha offers do you think wolfram alpha can handle this Make a guess, we're about to see it. Ready, set, and go. Yes, Wolfram Alpha was able to understand my query this time. Thank you, Wolfram Alpha. You did a good job. Let's give you some credit. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.